As we all know, the desert is a place where there is almost no grass and very little precipitation. However, under the largest desert in China, there is an ocean hidden underground, and the fresh water resources it contains account for one fifth of the world. Okay, what we are going to talk about today is the Taklamakan Desert in Xinjiang, which is the largest desert in China. Why is there an ocean hidden under the endless desert? In addition, China has not exploited the precious fresh water resources under the desert so far. Why is it? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about. At first, why are there abundant freshwater resources under the Darim Desert? In fact, in ancient times, this place was actually a sea area. After years of geological evolution, the sea water receded and the land rose, and finally it gradually dried up and became the barren desert it is today. In addition, the Darim Basin is an internal drainage basin, while the Taklamakan Desert is surrounded by mountains, and the water from the surrounding mountains will eventually converge in the basin. On the whole, it is equivalent to a large closed intermountain basin, and the flat terrain in the middle was the ocean in the early days. In addition, there are 144 rivers in the Darim Basin throughout the year. They are ice and snow melt water from the surrounding mountains, and the total annual runoff is about 39.2 billion cubic meters. Among them, about 190 million cubic meters of groundwater flowed into the desert, and 150 million cubic meters of water remained after removing the evaporation of water. Over time, an underground ocean gradually formed under the desert. So why hasn't China exploited it so far? In fact, it is mainly for environmental reasons. The water levels of the underground sea are also interrelated. Once exploited, the underground water level of the entire desert will drop, which in turn will cause large areas of the desert to collapse. It turned out that the abundant fresh water resources under the Darim Desert were just a joy in vain. So, how does China solve the problem of extremely uneven distribution of domestic water resources? Are there other places in China where water resources can be exploited? Okay, let's figure this out. Many people may think that earthquakes and tsunamis cause the most casualties, but according to United Nations statistics, floods and droughts are the natural disasters that occur most frequently and cause the most number of deaths. Due to China's geographical environment, the distribution of water resources is very uneven. Most of China's water resources are distributed in the south, and the north is relatively short of water. There are floods in the south year after year, while in the north there are severe droughts every year. In terms of per capita water volume, the most thirsty places in China are the industrially developed Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, and other places. The extreme water shortage line in international standards is 500 per capita, and here it is less than 150. Water shortages have occurred in so many provinces and municipalities, severely limiting China's economic development. China urgently needs a project that can solve these problems, so, the South to North water diversion was put on the schedule. In 2002, China started a huge project with an estimated investment of 500 billion yuan. It is estimated that it will take at least 40 years to complete this project. Well, this is the South to North water diversion to solve the water problem of northern Chinese. Up to now, it has been under construction for 20 years and cost 250 billion yuan, however, it has not been completed. Despite this, the project has already solved the water problem of hundreds of millions of people before it is completed. In fact, it is very difficult to build a waterway that spans more than 1,000 kilometers. Now, let's take a look at this mage project in details. Let's first talk about the Eastern Line project. To briefly summarize, it is a line that the water flows to high places. This line is 1,785 kilometers long, and the end point is more than 40 meters higher than the starting point, that is, the water has to flow to a high place. 160 giant water pumps in 13 stages were built along the way to pump these precious freshwater resources to the northern China. But the Central Line project is only one pump station, and all the water will be transported to 1,432 kilometers away. How is that possible? 
This is inseparable from a great dam, the Danjianku Dam. It may not be as famous as the Three Gorges Dam, but its significance is by no means inferior to the Three Gorges. In 2012, the Danjianku Dam was raised to 176.6 meters, raising its water level to 170 meters. Its final water level is more than 100 meters higher than the end point in Beijing. So, without any other pumps, the water here can go all the way north to Beijing. However, the biggest problem faced by such automatic water transportation by water level difference is that the existing waterway cannot be used. In other words, more than 1,400 kilometers of waterways need to be rebuilt. It is in this great project of changing the world that the Chinese have created countless miracles. For example, in order to pass through the Yellow River, the underpass tunnel built is 50.5 meters deep and 16.4 meters in inner diameter. A 16-story building can be placed in it, and the shield machine has been drilling for more than 500 days. These incredible projects are only part of the south-to-north water diversion. In fact, as the drinking water is transferred, the water quality has become a crucial part. In order to ensure that the water still maintains high quality after it has crossed more than 1,400 kilometers, almost all the high-polluting enterprises around the water source have been shut down. More than 100 sewage treatment plants and 100 waste treatment plants have been established. In addition, because the water level of Danjianku Reservoir has risen, more than 340,000 residents nearby have to leave the land where they have grown up for generations and relocate to all parts of the country. In fact, these local residents began to relocate as early as 1958. This year is also known as the first year of the South to North Water Diversion Project. In a village in Hunan, there is a monument composed of 56 stone tablets, which records the process of people's migration at that time. There are about 165,400 local residents' names on it. These 10 towns used to be their hometowns where their ancestors lived from generation to generation, but because of the water diversion project, their hometowns no longer exist. The existence of historical monuments is to allow these people to have a place to commemorate again. Even if the ancestral land has sunk to the river, the names on the monument will always be remembered. Now, how is the progress of the South to North Water Diversion Project? According to what has been done so far, everything is going well. The construction of the Western Line has not yet started. Due to the extremely high difficulty of construction, it is still in the process of planning. In addition to this, the Eastern Line and the Central Line are all in stable operation. On November 15, 2013, the first phase of the Eastern Line project was officially opened, and it can draw up to 8.8 .8 billion cubic meters of water within a year. On December 12, 2014, the Central Line project was officially opened. By 2020, water has been transported for more than 2,000 days, reaching as much as 30 billion cubic meters, benefiting hundreds of millions of people along the way. 70% of the water needs of the urban agglomerations around Beijing have been solved, and the local people have said goodbye to bitter alkaline water and felt the sweetness of clean water. Okay, that's all for today. See you next time.